Welcome to Beyond Our Focus. I'm Stefan, this is Amanda, and this is What's in the Box for November 2nd, Friday, after Halloween. Hence the much more Halloween-y appearance. <laughs> Hence the mask that I'm super muffled in. You, you sound like you're talking in a bathroom. Not, not, yeah, un- we, we... <laughs> not unlike when we... we started our podcast and we were looking for spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really echoey. That didn't work out well. Yeah, we had ended up going to a library to see if we could borrow their study room. And when we got there, it turned out that three out of the four walls were glass. Yeah. Well, technically two and a half were glass. One of them was a wall with a giant window. Yeah. And, yeah, you walk in there and it was just just like you're talking to someone in a restroom. Yeah, very, very, very okay. It did not work out very well at all. No. It was a try, though. We had to go not somewhere. That, not that we could have used it anyway for how yeah. long it takes us to phone. That wouldn't have worked anyway. No. One hour, one show, that would have been fine, but not four shows. No, not to the point we've gone to now. Uh, but as far as costume-wise go, I think we did hit on point because though we are two days after Halloween, it is the nightmare before Christmas. Yeah, yeah, so... This works great. If you watch any of our other content, we're also going to have costumes on for everything this week. He is. I, I kind of just went the, yeah. the, the slim route on that. You're a little slimmer on the, the costumes tonight. These are accumulated over many years. <laughs> I've just kept them in a box. Whipped them out and we're just, we've yeah. gone this route. Since I've moved down here, I haven't really gone like full on costume. It was mostly makeup and whatever happened, I happened to wear. Now, if I had my first suit, <laughs> I was going to wear my blank, but it has no eyes, so. <laughs> been creepy. Creepy! <laughs> it literally, actually, no, it's not even hinged together yet either, so it would literally just be a resin blank, and you wouldn't be able to hear anything. Creepy! <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to breathe either, so. <laughs> <laughs> be all right. It would be all right. Yeah, I don't do well with um, face paint. No? I've done it. Just not my thing. My face itches a lot. Yeah. Just naturally, I touch my face too much. I can't go. The, it's like, oh, it'll be a little bit all right. And it's just going to be constantly like, c- yeah. scratch, scratch, <laughs> a little bit, try not to mess it up. And it's just like, yeah, it just, I don't do well. Um, but, I'm, okay. I was like, but on the other hand, I also don't like wearing a mask either. So it just, it's a lose lose for me. You're doomed for Halloween. It seems that way. No. Half the time, I either. The only problem areas I have is if I get tired, I start going like this a lot. So any eyeshadow, anything like that, just glitter all down my hand. Or um, nose paint, because a lot of times I'll do either a squirrel nose or just a small little fox nose. And uh, the paint I have is usually not a good quality, so I'll end up going like this. Or I'll just go like this, just... It's just scratching us. Yeah, and it, it, next thing I know, it's like, oh, well, grease paint down my hand. Yeah. I understand. But no, otherwise, I usually do pretty well with it. Um, most of the time, like, most of the time, I just forget it's there. I, I just don't feel it anymore. Yeah, but I still touch my face way too much. Way, way too much. And with my really crappy allergies and sneezing... And ever, it just it uh, face paint me don't do well. Well, it's not for everybody. No. So I take it you've never been turned into a zombie then. No, no, I've not. Shame. I think the longest so I've worn face shame. paint is on uh, two occasions. One, we went to a Saints game in the dome. Yeah. And Sandy's very insisted on wearing face paint. <laughs> so face paint during that, black and gold, and then. When we were watching, uh, what was it, uh, Super Bowl night, when the Saints were at the Super Bowl, we were at Hooters, all decked out, dressed up, face painted. It was me, her, my brothers, all of us. It was a good time. It was a good time. We had a good time. We were decked out and face painted everything. She ended up winning the TV that's in the living room. So. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, it was real nice. <laughs> uh, I don't think full face paint, like full like grease makeup or... Um... I don't know, most of the time it's either grease paint or um, some kind of cream makeup. But, don't look at me. I don't, I don't but know. either way, um, 
I've never done anything solid like that, like the whole, like, game day face paint. Like, see here, I'm already scratching my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. But, it's already gone. You've already wiped it off. <laughs> um, but as far as, like, I've turned myself, like, when I worked at Village of Terror, we, part of practice, we had to turn ourselves into zombies. So that was practice. Um, I... Mostly use eyeshadows and stuff as far as any kind of cat or animal thing that I've done. Um, but I, I don't think I've done a full coverage of any kind of face makeup. Maybe white. Maybe white. Because I think I tried doing a sugar skull once. One of the hardest makeups to do. Because so easy to mess up. Like as soon as one fingerprint and you're just fucked. Because it's just that solid white and then the outline of the skull and stuff like that. And it's just one, one little smudge and it's no longer that pretty bright white anymore. Yeah, I can never like go to a convention or something with face paint. I just wouldn't get through they, it. They do have some pretty solid paint though. <clears throat> like they like they do have some really nice like anti-smear or if you have the right setting spray to where you can just sit there and... I don't know. I guess the, maybe 100% right I could get away with it, but it's hard. Uh, now, it, get, like nails, no, I don't think they have anything particular for that. But as far as just like touching, yeah, they have. I don't know. I don't know. It'd be hard. I've never done. I tried to avoid characters that I'm going to have to use some kind of face paint on. Well, it's like when I was doing makeup, I remember us being able to do that. Like, I would do. Um, like small little wounds or something like that and uh, for just at the end of the night after doing everyone else's makeup and stuff and be able to touch them and not come away with anything so it's between the makeup and the setting spray or the setting powder you you'd be fine it just I don't know like it's according to the character I've always just pick and choose um, generally I don't think of stuff I've actually done Everything I've, I've done has not required, only most everything I've done has not required a mask or paint of any kind. Hmm. It's usually uh, the last year I went as a plague doctor yeah. from Shovel Knight, and that was a mask. But it feels weird being in a mask in the convention the entire time. Yeah. It almost feels like I'm looking through a lens. And yeah. I feel like I'm not actually there. Like I'm watching it on television <laughs> or something. It feels weird. No, that makes sense, though. Yeah, so it was interesting. It's like, hmm, I don't really want to do it that way again. I like, uh, I love being at the convention, so yeah. I don't don't like the feeling of feeling like I'm not there, but I am there. It just, it was an odd way of going about it. I, I can definitely understand that, and I can definitely, um, like, <clears> if <throat> once I get my suit done, like, once I get the um, the head and the headpiece and everything done. It'll probably feel the same way. I mean, the, oh, what is it? I think really the only thing that I'm more worried about than that, though, is a lot of times uh, with fursuiters, you have a blind spot. Like, <laughs> just almost with any mask you do, but it's like, <clears throat> the eyes are here, and actually, most of the time, um, you're seeing, because the eyes will be right here, and you're actually seeing out of a small corner of mesh in the corners of the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, all you see, really, is the snout. And that's it. So, it's like, if you want to see something, you turn your entire head. Well, I understand. Yeah. <clears throat> For the most part, I mean, the Plague Doctor mask, not very, <laughs> not like it had a lot. I think, what did I do? Because I tore out what they had in it and put my own. Yeah. Uh, put some kind of other mesh or something in there if something was better to kind of cover it so it was black and you didn't see my eyes through it. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, I mean, you're blind on both sides. You have no peripherals in it whatsoever. You see in front of you, and then I've got the uh, the actual beat going in front. Mm -hmm. And it's like, looked cool. I really liked the costume. I got a lot of compliments on it and everything. But I don't like being blind most of the convention. Well, see, you're already ready for fursuiting. <sighs> You don't like being blind? All right, let's make it worse. <laughs> so let's give you 
ears that you have to worry about. Let's give you a tail that people might step on if it's long enough. Well, you're a bat, so I don't think you have to worry about that. Bunny bat, bat. Just how, giant wings. Actually, I don't know. How does he have? Because some bats do have tails. No, he, he's not going to have a tail. Does, got, it, does his species have a tail? Or is it a no, it, it's generally, he, for the most part, he's got maybe a tiny bit between the legs a little bit to add more flaps, but not really a tail. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I've never really looked into that. Bats and tails. I don't think they really have tail tails. It's generally like the flaps will go from their arms down to their legs and then from each leg to leg. And just like a huge, so they can fly and glide and stuff. Interesting. For some reason, I always pictured them kind of like a possum or a, like with like a rat tail. I don't know why. Yeah, that, that's my knowledge that I've seen. Mm. I'm just not saying that none of them po ever have tails, but <laughs> not that I have seen. Hmm. But, um, no, with a fursuit of a bat... Of course, you'd have that shorter snout, so of course you'd, you'd get away with that good. And if, I mean, if you don't have a tail, it's just the wings that would, you'd kind of have to watch out for, because if you swing wide and just beat the shit out of somebody. Well, that'd be good too. <laughs> just knock somebody over. I've seen, I've actually seen some really cute bat fursuiters. Like, um, the picture that you showed me that you were using kind of like reference wise. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen costumes that cute of bats. <laughs> like, um, actually, at, um, at, at FWA, the year that I went, um, they had a Halloween bat. Like, it was literally orange and, like, black and orange and everything. I was like, is it my buddy? It's amazing what some people can do. One of the packs all the years we've gone, there's been some amazing costumes. People do some really cool stuff. Like, oh, I just, I don't know how you do that. Hmm. Also, try to get into the convention with a costume. Also kind of a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Getting into the convention itself. Mm -hmm. Because, one, there's a line to get in. Because either, one, you show up super early. You got to sit all hours and hours and hours and sit and move and be in a costume. Or, you show up more close to when it actually opens. So, you don't have to wait as long. You should have in line. You have to go through a metal detector. Mm. Oh, a metal detector with a costume that there's good chance. Probably going to use metal somewhere. No, um, most, I actually, I'm trying to think of, thinking back, like, I want to say most fursuiters do not show up at the conventions with their suits. Some of them do because there is, um, I don't know if you want to call it a stigma or just, there are some people that are super self-conscious about being part of the furry community. So they will show up eat, like at least in a partial where they just have the head on and everything like that because they don't want their identities known. Mm -hmm. um, and, but otherwise, most of the people just show up with them in cases which, and then go change in the... Which I've seen people do that too. Yeah. Show up with with their stuff and go somewhere and get changed and then come out that way. Yeah. But that also means you have to get that through security. Yeah. Which may be less and has been less in previous years at PAX but each year gets more and more security because yeah. we've had more and more threats and then especially in Boston after the Boston bombing. Yeah. And it's just it's just getting worse and worse and harder to get in. And then you go like, oh, right, let me carry this giant suitcase in. <laughs> That's not suspicious. No, um, like right now, I think I have uh, most like it's in a clear Tupperware container, and it has like the head, the tail, that pretty much any like I think it has his head, his tail, his gloves, like uh, I mean his I almost called him arm warmers, his arm sleeves, his gloves. And I think maybe his holsters, but it's all in a clear plastic type of case. Yeah. I'd have to look up, because there's some people who get in with some pretty extravagant stuff. I'm trying to figure out how they actually get in with all this stuff. Because there's got to be a way. 
<laughs> There's got to be like some special entrance that's like, hey, yes, you can go through security here, get things searched, get things this, blah, 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 to make it easier to get in the waiting in the regular normal line. There has to be something. Hmm. Yeah. I would think. Because, again, people have gotten some pretty extravagant. I mean, a couple of years ago we had a bumblebee. He was like legit. He was like 10 feet tall and he was very legit. Very impressive. So I've I, seen some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know how he got in with all the stuff he had. I guess it depends if it was metal or not. I mean, or even that. I mean, still, what, what, you still have to search through trunks and stuff. Yeah. You have to get all your bags checked. You have to go through a metal detector. That's just. Um. Did they have any, well, obvi- maybe probably not for some event like that. Like for us, um, the are you talking about the hotel in general or the actual event? What do you mean? Um, okay, so say uh, like the conventions that I've been to. Um, I've never been to one where you had to have a metal detector. But yeah, well, these are, these are a little bit well, bigger, yeah, I think, than the ones you've yeah, been well, to. But... It, obviously, it's Boston. But um, besides that point, what I'm saying is that we have people who will show up, like, maybe a couple days before the convention even starts. And they'll already have their hotel room set up, everything like that. They'll already check in. But obviously, they can't go to the event till it starts. Mm-hmm. And then it's registration or pre or if you've already pre-registered, you just go pick up your stuff. So what I'm saying well, there's is... there's no registry, registry for any of this. You get... You, you buy tickets online, they ship you the tickets, you have tickets, you just go in. Well, that's the thing. It's like, uh, for us, um, it would be pre-registration and registration is sort of like buying your tickets online versus buying them at the door. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, pretty much, if you've already bought them online, you just go in, you give them your name, they hand you your ID thing, and... You don't even have to do all that. So much simpler. It's so much simpler. Yeah. They send you a little badge, and you're good. You oh, go okay. in. Okay. You get you guys get your sent to you. I'm sorry. Exactly. There's no yeah. there's no walking in and doing all this this complicated well, stuff. They just you send you a badge. Your, you're good. Okay. Well, we get to you pick up your badge. You pick up um, depending on most most pre registers pre registration people early registration whatever. Um, they get a free poster. Um, you can buy a T-shirt. Stuff like that, and it's all in your little bag. And so they just. But um, either way, what this entire <laughs> point was: Do you have? Is there a separate separation between the hotel and the actual event itself? Because yeah. technically, the person could come a couple days later, already have themselves set up, and then just when they go to the event itself, already be Bumblebee. I mean, he could. He could be one of the guys sitting in the hotel. He would still have to get through security, though. Well, I'm sure he could, but, I mean, it, you're talking about, like, totes and totes of stuff. Yeah, or was it if he got dressed inside? Yeah. Versus, yes. Yeah. He could stay at the hotel. There are hotels that are... Uber, uber close, and one that's kind of, I think, kind of technically connected to it. Yeah. But you still have to go through security of some sort. Even if he was wearing that, they'd have to... I don't know how he would go through security, but he still has to. Even if he's staying at the hotel, that is connected. I miss going to conventions. It's conventions been a are while. great. It's been a while. Not for me. Shut up. Anyways, if you haven't kind of caught on to what we were talking about... If you didn't just pick here, up on it yeah. at all during the whole time we've been going over this. Um, I, he's mostly talking about PAX. Yes, PAX. Penny Arcade Expo. It's a video game convention. Yes. And I'm just talking about conventions in general. Like, I have been to a couple different anime conventions, anime sci-fi gaming conventions, and then I've also been to one furry convention. And well, how many people are at your biggest convention, in your opinion? How many people you are think there? were there? Not even close to what you're thinking. Well, I'm <laughs> saying, how yeah. many? How many? How big is your convention? How many people show up to these things? I don't know in total. They don't give numbers. They do, but I don't remember the shit. Okay, 
Well, I believe PAX East is somewhere between eighty and 90,000. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> no. We're talking about maybe like... 1300? Oh, 1300. Yeah. Oh, that's all. That's a good number there. Yeah, there's just a slight difference in scale. <laughs> oh. But Pax is awesome. It is awesome. Pax South is also awesome. But a lot smaller. I haven't seen a number on how big that one is, but it is a lot smaller. How much are tickets for Pax East? <clears throat> Pax East. Um, they switched to four days, and it's forty dollars a day, so one hundred sixty bucks. Mhm. Mm and so, um, the last time we went, they're still doing three days, and they were still offering the um, the three day pass because East quit offering that because they said that people were people were used buying the three day pass, but not going all three days. Mm. I think it was a way to make more money because the single day passes are more expensive, but it is what it is. But so it's like, I think 85 for three days. That's not bad. No, not bad at all. South is a lot cheaper, but it's also the one that tickets don't sell out. East tickets sell out and within like 45 minutes to an hour, they're gone. Oh, all 85,000 nice. tickets are gone. Um, PAX West sells out faster than that. And PAX South, you still may have tickets at the door. When it starts. So there's a huge difference between the two conventions. South is also the newest. So, and has the least amount of larger names in the gaming industry to show up. Well, I may not make it to PAX, but maybe I'll go to Boston sometime. <laughs> yeah, you should go to PAX South. You should have a good time. It's a great time. Absolutely love conventions. We're going to East oh, me too. for. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I'm sure if I go you back somewhere on Facebook, year? I remember it. But I'm bad with dates. I don't remember what year it was. I remember the experience. I remember going. I remember what we did. I remember getting there for the first time. I don't remember what date it was. Hmm. I am really bad with dates. I can't really say that I remember the first um, No Brand Con that I went to. Um, I don't. I so see, I'd have to be I like. I guess I can't say anything. Go to like my memories on Facebook. Show me some pictures I posted when I went to this thing, so I could actually get a date. But I've been going for six, seven years ish, the east and the last three or four to south. So, it has been a blast, and I will continue to go as long as I possibly can because I love them. So, if you guys want to ever see us at conventions. I will be at Pack South and East. <laughs> I have no idea where I'll be. I, I, I You're going to be at South with me. I'm going to be at South. <laughs> I'm currently going to be at South. I'm not sure how you get in there yet, but we're, we're going South. Um, you said that one's January, some, mid-January sometime? Yeah, mid-January. Okay. I think it's like this 12th-ish, the weekend of the 12th, I think. Okay. So, pretty much, I'm going to have to see if I can, let's see, get on vacation the same time as you, as Mike, Mike and meanwhile, the two people on my team, uh -huh. yeah, mm -hmm. one of them's having their kid in February or March, and the other one's in April. But that's not January. You are right. January is solid. Do you see them lifting totes when they're like, oh, Nobody cares. They'll figure it out. <clears throat> They'll figure it out. <laughs> Be alright. Be alright. Let's see. I can't even remember how many... Days. I think I have two days of vacation left. That's all you need. It's all music. Is it just um, Friday and Monday? We'll leave Thursday mm -hmm. and come back Monday. I meant vacation wise. Which two days are you taking off? Something like that. I'll Friday I think, and Monday. I, well, I think I'll take off Thursday and Tuesday, and then re use personal request time off for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. 
that makes it work. It still work forty uh, four, three four days, get thirty two hours, and go to vacation. Or work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one day of vacation, which works with the thirty two, and then go on vacation. Plague system. I'll figure it out. Plague system. I, I'll figure it out. I have no idea. Yeah, but you're okay with thirty two hours. Half the you could be fine on thirty two hours for a week. Yes, you could I'm make sure it. I, I'm sure I would. And we'd be coming back Monday anyway. Yeah. So you could go back to work Tuesday. No. I just choose to take off. Th fall I'm, not, I'm not going to show up at four in the morning the next day. You got Tuesday. this. <laughs> no. That's I refuse. I request off the extra day. I hate, hate with a passion going to work the very next day after I get back. No. It's like, oh my God. That's any trip. Yeah, it's like, it's the trip. same thing I did when I got back from Wisconsin. I was like, I got back. I'm not going to work the next day. This no. is not happening. You need, you need a, at least at least a day buffer. Mm -hmm. It's like, the one before is a day to travel. The one after is a day to recoup. We're good. Pretty much. It's a blush. I'm telling you, you should go with us. I know it might be hard, but you should go with us. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what's going on between then and now, or and mostly it's holidays and. Just stuff. tell everyone they're not getting anything for the holidays. But you would very much appreciate if they gave you money, and you go on this vacation. <laughs> I don't quite think that's how it works. I think so. Yeah. It's a you giving a season. You have a they're giving to you. You have a strange family. <laughs> Has that ever worked for you? I don't get anything from anybody during Christmas. The only thing I get during the holidays, well, I get stuff from my wife. But that, other than that, that is it. I got you a baggie of candy last Christmas, okay? I, I, you know, I do remember that. I do remember that. I didn't know what else to get you. I didn't know you back then. Are <laughs> <laughs> you strange man? <laughs> I just gave you and Michael bags of candy, okay? I just knew you like that. That's all I knew. I do appreciate candy. And sweets, as we've, I think, gone over quite extensively. Which our um, nice little spread today is we still have the striped cookies from last time. We have little Elmer Fudge. Striped Elmer cookies? Elmer Fudge, not Fudge. Uh, as you've seen us almost exclusively eat during this episode so far, because they're very tasty. We're eating Elmer Fudge. It is Christmas, so... It is Halloween, so we got candy corn... And then you grab whatever these things are. Chicken flavored crackers. Sure, They're, sure. Technically, the chicken and biscuit is a lot better. I don't, these, this off-brand Dollar General stuff yeah, is not. Fine. I've never had anything like them. Well, the, as, as, don't judge them based off. Don't judge them based off. No. Because one, these crackers are a lot tougher. Like, the other ones are kind of have a more, like, fluffy, soft texture to them. So it's really good. And then the, the flavor is a lot. More, more authentic. Authentic. Tastes authentic like a chicken. chicken. <laughs> this one is kind of like they just half sprinkled a little seasoning on them and put it on a tough cracker. Yeah, they're different. Not not something I would naturally gravitate towards. Oh, you're also a sugar fiend. I am. I am. I am balanced. I like sugar, but I have to balance that with salt. No, no, no. Sugar, 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 sugar. I love sugar. Well, we started off on a really weird note today because originally we were going to start like we normally do, which is movies. But we went straight into conventions, which is fine. But well, it's we just... went to other things before conventions. It ended into conventions. That... I thought we just flat out went no, into conventions. No, we started. There was somewhere else, and then I brought up conventions because of it. It was face paint and Halloween costumes. Oh, we were talking about Halloween costumes. Yes, that led yes. to face paint, that led to conventions, that led to where we are now. I don't even know. But yes, we did go see a movie. <laughs> I think wow. we both have seen Halloween. Yes, we both saw Halloween two different days. And what did you think? What Did you like it? I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I haven't seen a Halloween movie in a while. Did you see? The, well, you, you've seen at least the original. Or it's, original. I have. I, I, I think I've seen probably five or six of them. But I just don't remember most yeah. of them. It's been a long... It's okay. You don't need to remember most yeah. of them. It's been a long, long, long time. So. 
But I did very much enjoy this movie. I thought it was really good. They did a great job. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was really good in it. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't really think of anyone like who stands out as, wow, that was just horrible. But No, yeah, everyone did a good yeah. job. Nice little slasher film. It was very Halloween. Like, it was very Michael Myers. So. Yeah, I mean, this really, really felt like a Michael Myers Halloween movie. They didn't take, like, a lot of chances or anything. Oh. I will say, I, I appreciate it. One of the little reviews I had watched on it said that they really liked the the humor that they added into the movie. Mm-hmm. It felt very natural. It felt very good. And they're, they're talking up to um, Danny McBride. Since he was a big part of making this movie. Mm-hmm. He's one of the writers and producers. And, and since he is a comedian, it was something yeah. he wove in very well. One, my, one of my favorite lines of the entire movie was towards the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like making a peanut butter sandwich. He's like, oh, I got peanut butter on my penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, thanks, Dad. Like... <laughs> I'm like, okay. I wasn't expecting that, for and sure. Then, yep. And then a few minutes later, he's like, well, I'm going to go wipe the peanut butter off my penis. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun family setting and really, really set the tone. It was very funny. I, I liked it a lot. I think my one of my favorite lines is, it was in the trailer, so it's like, uh, kind of be, to be expected, but it was like, you don't have a security system. <laughs> now her flipping out on them, how yeah. easy it was for her to get inside the house. Because she, she's just like, bang, gotcha. And it's like, you're dead. And just climbs down the stairs. It's like, what are you doing in my house? How did you get in my house? Yeah. It was good. It was good. We, we, you can't tell. We enjoyed it. It was, it was fun. Again, it felt really, it felt like a Halloween movie. Yeah. Really, it felt like what Halloween movie should be. It didn't do anything too extravagant. It didn't go over the top. We weren't in space. <laughs> Everything ends up in space at some point. It has to. Jason X, I think, was in space. <laughs> we don't talk about those movies. I don't. I remember very little of that. The only thing I really remember that from that movie were the the girls in the sleeping bags. And I'm taking the sleeping bags and just beating them against the tree. Boy. Like yeah, that's that's the way to go. That is the way to go. Well, it's like um, in the Friday the 13th remake when he hung a girl in a sleeping bag over a fire and she's boiled alive in the sleeping bag. I don't think you would boil alive in a sleeping bag. Just gonna throw that out there. What I mean by <laughs> boiled alive, geez. I just feel like the sleeping bag would catch you on fire. Well, she the, might... okay. The sleeping bag, of course, is catching on fire, but... It's the heat that gets to you first, so her skin's starting to do the bubbling and peeling off and mm. stuff like that. That's what I meant by boiled alive. Okay. okay. Um, meanwhile, her boyfriend is watching her being burned alive. <laughs> That's better for you. It's more accurate term. Because yeah. his foot is caught in a bear trap. What? I never, I never saw the remake, so no. I can't really... Yeah. Comment on any of this. I have not seen the movie. So Jared Padalecki. Who the what? Jared Padalecki. What is Sam- it, Jared Padalecki? <laughs> Sam Winchester from Supernatural. He was in this. Yes. He I, was- I, I, that was his name. Yeah. His name is Sam Winchester. That's how what I do him by Sam and Dean. Ah, <laughs> Jared and Jensen. That's confusing, huh? Who and what? Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles. I have seen these names. I knew, I knew yeah. Okay. And then Jensen, uh, he was actually in My Bloody Valentine. I haven't seen. And he was also, of course, in soap operas like Days of Our Lives and stuff. I think I knew that. Yeah. but It's funny because they played on that during a episode of Supernatural. Like, they get transported to our, our world, in a sense, where Supernatural is a TV show. <laughs> they, are, they are Jared and Jensen, and so they end up in Jensen's trailer, and they're like, Jared's, Sam's Googling them, 
trying figuring out <laughs> figuring out who they are and a video that comes up is Jensen doing his <laughs> days of our lives acting and he's like just shoot me <laughs> oh you know I, I, I it would be nice to get back in that show <laughs> Andrew, we watched like five or six seasons and I yeah. was like okay I've seen enough we binged five or six seasons and I'm like I've oh, yeah. seen enough I need a break from the show it's getting very samey, and I'm like, I need a break from this. Yeah. So, and we just never went back. There's a lot of And now they're like 13, 14 seasons yeah. into something. There's a lot of interesting episodes. I like, um, like... What I want to watch, just out of context, I don't even care. Yeah. I want to see the Scooby-Doo one. Yes, uh, Scooby Natural was hilarious. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, another one that I watched recently, just like, I picked it out of nowhere, random, was, uh... No, I can't remember. I just go back and watch, like, the really fun ones. Like, oh, there was one where they go to a... Um, did you ever hear of the story arc where there's books being written about them? Like, their actual lives. Like, it, like it turns out that there's a prophet, and he is writing su Supernatural, the novels, and what he's writing is actually what's going on. And he's not... He's not... Um, making their their lives he's just writing it it's pretty much like he's writing the bible of sam and dean and so he uh the story arc comes back because they I said mean, some like never ending story stuff <laughs> kind of it kind of in a sense um except they tell him just to stop writing like they're done and so this is way back or like going further ahead in the future he uh they get a text from that guy saying like hey it's an emergency come now we need you and so they just speed they show up the first thing they notice is that there's a bunch of impalas like sh just parked and they're like why what's going on next thing you know they see the guy and he's like i didn't text you and it turns out it was his creepy assistant who's obsessed with Sam. But it turns out uh, she invited them, invited loosely, but to a supernatural convention. So, so this sounds familiar. So they see a whole bunch of people dressed up like Sam and Dean and Castiel and just <clears throat> all these other characters. And oh, it's Castiel. I like him. I love Castiel. Oh my god. Misha Collins. I He's really, so funny. really enjoyed him when they introduced him into the fold mm -hmm. of everything. Very literal. Very literal. He doesn't understand human stuff. Yes, much. yes. He's, since he, what, I believe he's an angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's, it's been a while. But um, it's funny because the. Uh, There's a puppy. The puppies. Yeah. Puppy. There's puppies. Did you need to let them out? <laughs> no, 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 they're fine. But um, at one point in time, the episode I was talking about where they come back into the present, our present, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, Misha Collins is there, and he's like, they they run up to him and they're like, Castiel, we're so glad to see you, and he's like, yes, um. He's like, yes, what did you guys need? And they're like, well, we need you to get us out of here. What's going on? And he's like, I, I, don't, I don't remember that one in the script. And he's like, are you guys doing the whole improv thing? See, now the more you talk about this, the more like, I'm remembering yeah. <laughs> some of it. But he like, uh, he sits, like, he's obsessed with Twitter. Like, Mitch Collins is obsessed with Twitter. So, like, they, uh... Sam, like they're they realize this is just an actor, so they both just walk away from him, and he's like, "Ah, oh, you guys are so funny!" And so he gets on his phone. And he's like, he's like, fooled again, <laughs> and he's just he's he's adorable. Yes, I very very much enjoy his character in the show. But again, it's it's been a while. It's been a while we watched. Like I said, five or six seasons. And uh, since then, there's been another five or six, seven, eight, nine. See, I don't even know anymore. I don't know. I haven't watched all of them. I'll just go. 
I usually just kind of scroll through. Like, I've seen, like, bits and pieces, like, just random episodes that have come on TV. So I'll go through that season and kind of pick out the funny ones and watch them. Yeah, I need to. Or, like, the really interesting ones. Like, they've had ones, like, on the Roanoke Colony and stuff like that. One day. One day, I think, maybe. Maybe. There's too much to watch these days. There's just too much. Uh, currently watching Daredevil Season 3, which is, so far, excellent. It is really good. Good television right there. I've only seen season one if I've seen all of season one. Season one's really good. First half of season two, really good. That sounds first, hopeful. Well, the first half of season two is with Daredevil. With, mm. Daredevil. with the Punisher. Mm. So it's Daredevil and the Punisher. And that's really good. But the second half focuses more on Elektra and the the hand and stuff so that first half of Punisher is excellent it's really good but the second not as good still good just not as good and the third season so far been it's been great they've done a really good job with it um how are you liking the actual Punisher just not like... you mean the actual you mean the series that came out the mm-hmm. Punisher really great mm-hmm. well I think also one of their best ones they've done <clears throat> he did a really good job. What's his name? Something Burnthal. I can't remember his name. Something Burnthal. Ah, I forget his first name, but yeah, he's really, really great as the Punisher. Yeah, because he played Shane, I think. Yeah, in yeah, and Day. I hated him as Shane. I hated him as Shane. Everyone hated Shane, okay? But it almost made me hate him as an actor for how much I hated <laughs> him as Shane. It's kind of like uh, seeing, I had seen something on Facebook the other day showing um, uh, the girl who plays Umbridge. In Harry yeah. Potter, and it says, "Hate the character, respect the actress." And it's like I just can't even respect the actress. I just <laughs> her character is like ruined her face. <laughs> I will not. Oh my god! I will not see her and not think. <laughs> and just Umbridge was such a horrible character. I mean, she did her job well. You hated her. Oh Ugh. god! I cannot stand her. Oh no, she was. Every She's time. worse than Voldemort. Yes, yes, she was. <laughs> I'm sorry, but everything was pink. Her sugar was pink. I love cats, but having an entire wall of kitten plates and her just like being an evil little. Just, and she was then horrible. Just, her just like, oh, are, are you are you saying you question me? And then just the. <laughs> that crackers a very different contrast to these cookies I've been eating. <laughs> That's the point. Well, they're way different. <laughs> no. uh, that face was woo! I mean, it's kind of like if you're a good pick, you go down like you pick up your sweet tea and somehow you actually get coke and you drink that. <laughs> like, whoa! What is that? Or like uh, when you go when you order food with somebody else and you end up with their drink on accident and you just like both the dark like. One's tea, one's cola of some sort, and you get theirs, and you're just like, okay, that's not tea. <laughs> really not tea. It's not what I was thinking it was supposed to be. So therefore, it just tastes completely wonky. Oh, well, that cracker was interesting. I just <laughs> had one before the show. I was like, oh, this is, okay, this is fine. Now, whew. <laughs> So for our podcast listeners, you just missed the greatest face ever. You have to go to the YouTube video and now watch that as well. Give us double the views. <laughs> but as far as um, Netflix binging or anything, I'm not really binging anything at the moment. I did watch the fir- first episode of A Haunting on Hill House. I've heard nothing but good things about it. It was... I, I actually very much enjoyed it. It wasn't like... To me, it didn't just feel like another cheesy horror knockoff that's going around. See, that's like, what I'm hoping. That's what I want from this. You want I, it to be another cheesy no, horror No, no, that's what I'm oh, hoping okay. it won't be. That oh, it wasn't no. going to be just some cheesy knockoff horror show. No. That's going to be like something legit, something good. Like, uh, literally one of the characters reminds me of you. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> just, <Good thing. laughs> purely based on the fact that he... He 
Take the children of dear passion. No, not that. Oh, God. <laughs> not that far. <laughs> no, just he's a skeptic. He's mm. They do have a a lot of skeptics in this one where it's like they're not just like, oh, something happened. It's got to be this. <laughs> no, like I would say maybe 80 to 90 percent of the characters are all skeptics. Like they don't. They may have gone through things, but they don't view it as Ooh, it's mm. the supernatural. But yeah. I'm going to think you're going to it. You've watched the first episode of that. I've watched the first episode of Maniac with Jonah Hill and Emma I keep... Stone. Yeah. Yeah. Also, look, the first episode, really intriguing. Hmm. Super interested in seeing more. I haven't been able to. <laughs> I've been behind on everything. And that's the issue. I've been behind on everything. I haven't been playing games. I haven't been watching a whole lot of television. I haven't been... <sighs> We're staying busy. Well, we also have a four-episode podcast... Other things in the making. Yeah. And you have a cello. Yes, I have a cello. And work. So I have to practice that. I've got to hold down a full-time job. i got to do other things in the making. <laughs> and then we have to film this and I have to edit and put out. And it's just, it's a lot to try to keep up with. But hopefully it's worth it -ish. Oh, we got this. We got this. <laughs> Your couch is very squeaky. It is a squeaky couch. And I hope it's not terrible on the microphone. But it no, is it's in... not wanting to squeak. I'm like... It, it, we, hear, we hear squeaks and just more squeaks and <laughs> more squeaks. I think it's enough squeaking for the audience. It's like mostly right there for some reason. It is. It's right where I place my arm to be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. If I just, kept that here, right there. we wouldn't have as much squeaking. But I like my arm up there. We have our Halloween decorations. We have a nice little goofy ghost and his pumpkin. Oh, yeah. We have um, our murder weapons. Mm-hmm. If you watch some of the other episodes, you'll see where some of these weapons came from. Let's see. I think I've threatened you twice with this. That's all right. And, uh, and then we, while we were sitting there talking about killing people. Yeah. The possibility of killing people. You guys should definitely check out, if you've not seen it, our, what was it, yesterday's episode? It would have been yes. yesterday's episode of Would You If? Yes. Definitely an interesting one. Definitely might change your perspective on who we are as people. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, if you went back and watched our one of our very first Would You Ifs, which was about... Whether or not you would save a child about ready to be hit by a car, that might also change your perspective on who we are as people. <laughs> Sometimes you do bad things for a good reason. Oh, okay. Is that what they told Spider-Man? <laughs> Something along those lines, I believe oh, okay. so. Okay, okay. With, with great power. Power comes great responsibility, which means taking out the... <laughs> with great power comes the choice of, or the decision to let people die <laughs> but yes like right. Batman said in Batman Begins I, I'm not gonna kill you but I don't have to save you it's true we also have an axe somewhere up there yep there's up there too and then <laughs> what's in the box a knife hmm. yep and then we have a pumpkin Yep, yep, yep. It's technically a full bottle of liquor that I've, I've never opened. Huh? Yep. Yeah. Captain Morgan there. Jacko Blast. Yes, I got it as a gift and I've not opened it ever. I will say, a keyboard cookies and chocolate tastes about the same all the way around. Both cookies. What? This cookie. And that cookie tastes uber similar. This cookie, like a dollar. That cookie, what? <laughs> I forgot these are both Art Keebler, are they? Mm -mm. Doesn't matter, they're still the same cookie. This is like, um. Actually, that's Dollar Tree. That's Dollar Tree stripe cookies. Tastes the same as Keebler. Now you guys know. <laughs> I guess the real question is, are we going to draw something out of the box this time? That's right. Last time we didn't. No. I what did we even talk about last time? 
food. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of food involved in the last episode. We went on a giant tangent about food. Oh! I know what we were going to talk about this episode. Do you? <laughs> we just never put it in the box. You're going to have to tell me because I don't. We were going to go over because this is our Halloween special. Oh. We are going to go over costumes. We were going to go over... Um, favorite horror movie characters. We were going to go over I memories. Just, I think it was just favorite horror movies. Well, when I said, when you said that, immediately you're like, Freddy, Jason, and th- those are I think people. we're mixing, I think we're mixing things up here. No, we're, no, we're not. I think we're mixing things up. Because my favorite horror movies has nothing to do with those. Or my favorite Halloween movies has nothing to do with those. It was just what you, when I asked you what you were talking about, that's what you gave me as an example. Ah, you're mixing things up. We're going to go ahead and <laughs> read. <laughs> oh, that's right. That part was not on camera. No, no, no. That was on camera. Great. I don't even have evidence. No evidence. They weren't in heaven. Where do we want to start? Let me start with movies. What's your favorite ha- Halloween movie in general? The one movie, if you have to watch one Halloween movie a year, what is it? Mm. That's not fair. <laughs> Technically. Do you not have a favorite Halloween movie? Technically, the movie I would watch every Halloween with my dad was Sleepy Hollow with John Depp. Good movie. But I really, really like Trick or Treat. I've never seen it. And you told me that before, and I was going to find it so that you could watch it, but I wasn't able to find it. You mean like the like list of movies we're supposed to like yes. each other for to watch? But no, um, Trick or Treat is the anthology one where it's like little short stories that all kind of flow, well, not really flow into each other, but there's like things that kind of tie them all in. Yeah. Mine's so much more kid friendly. You said so much more kid friendly. What is yours? The Charlie Brown one? No. <laughs> the my, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. There we go. No, no, no. My um, favorite Halloween movie of all time. It will always be my favorite Halloween movie of all time. Is it Nightmare Before Christmas? No. <laughs> also, great movie. <laughs> it's I not discount that movie. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I watched Nightmare Before Christmas on Halloween and Christmas, mm. and actually any time of the year. It's but. a great movie, oh! hands down. Hocus my, Pocus. Yeah, my favorite is Hocus Yay! Pocus. Will yeah, always be of course. Hocus Pocus. Yes. As far as actual Halloween Halloween movies, that would right right at the top. I just I've always loved it. I will always love it. Yes. I don't know what it is. It's just it's a it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Bette Miller, it's great. <laughs> is the puppy okay? I don't know. I thought my um, wife was home. I was actually pretty confident that she was home. But the fact that she's at my door means my wife might be sitting out in the car for who knows what reason. Or she's on the phone and she doesn't want to come in here and disturb us. Ah. Which means Kiki knows she's outside. So <laughs> Kiki's upset that Kiki can't get to her. Aww, I just bought puppy. <coughs> but as far as, yes, Halloween movies in general... Hocus Pocus is way... Oh. Love, love Hocus Pocus. Yes. I actually had a... When I first moved down here, we found like these two little house geckos in the house and I tried taking care of them for a while. One of them ran away, the other one died. <laughs> but I actually named one of them Thackeray. One was named... Uh, I think one was named Geico and the other one was Thackeray. <laughs> Geico. <Yeah. laughs> I know. <laughs> um... But as far as, like, horror-ish ones, yes, I really like Trick or Treat. I just really like anthology ones, and I haven't found any really good ones besides that one. Most of them, like, with, there's VHS, there's, uh, oh, what is it? There's another one, like, it's something holidays. I, I, I watched a couple on Netflix. But either way, it's, like, a huge hit and miss. Like, either the stories good, okay-ish, or absolutely terrible. At, with Trick or Treat, I think almost every single story was just worth watching. Yeah, it, it, it's hard for me for 
actual, like, legit horror movies. I mean, the only one that even comes to mind that I can say that I really, really enjoyed first. Horror is It. It was fantastic. Yeah. Something newer I've seen, something I really enjoyed. Uh, I really enjoyed some of the, like, Freddy Krueger's movies back in the day. But, I don't know, horror is really hard for me. All my favorite Halloween movies are all more like kids' movies. Like I said, Hocus Pocus. I really enjoyed, like, the original Casper. Mm, mm-hmm. And I also really, really enjoyed the only, only really enjoyed the first Halloween Town. Yes, me too. Didn't care for any of them after that. No, 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 no. They're, they're terrible after that. And then by the third person, they just changed the girl entirely. So, the first one's the only one worth trying to watch. And even it has its really campy moments. So, like, okay, this very obvious a made for TV movie. Well, but yeah. still, I enjoyed the, the concept behind it. Yes, I did too. And of course, <clears throat> no matter what, like you said before, the Merry Before, before Christmas. Christmas. <coughs> I'm going to die here. This water's going to kill me like it did you the other day. <clears throat> no, I legit was like... <laughs> no, it about got you. It's, been, it's almost the end. I had to leave because <clears throat> I was drowning, apparently. <laughs> drowning on set. Uh, but, no, I remember for Christmas. A magnificent movie all around. It's just a great, great, great movie. I don't know. There's a lot of them. Like, I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I really like Corpse Ride. I haven't. never seen it. It's in the living room. Never seen it. Not my fault. Why? I've never been able to get my wife to watch it with me. So, watch the damn movie. That's, that's difficult for me. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm. It's in the living room. <clears throat> I just need to grab it and stick it in. Yeah. yeah it, da, da. And I, I really, 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 really need to. Because I really, really love stop motion animation. Yes. Ugh. Some, I can't my, believe you've never seen Corpse. So my favorite movies, some stop motion stuff. I loved um, oh God, uh, must uh, must love dogs. No, no, it was called it was called uh, Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs. Must love dogs. Totally different movie. I, I don't totally. remember. I knew it had dogs in it. I forget. Isle of Dogs, 17. which is what a great uh, play on words. Isle of Dogs. Mm-hmm. I love dogs. Mm-hmm. It's like hmm. How clever of y'all. <coughs> super, super clever. So, yeah, it's over there. It's far away. I can't get to it. I was like, what the hell? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all the way over there. I can't do much about that. But So, love that. Loved uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Mm-hmm. What a fantastic movie. Like, super well done. Sad, but good. Yes. I uh, really loved Coraline. Yes, Coraline was very good too. So stop motion's really just I really enjoy stop motion. Um, how do you feel about like older ones like Chicken Run? Chicken Run, yes. It's about the chickens who are trying to escape the farm. I've never seen it. Um, I've never seen it. <laughs> have you that. ever seen any of the what is it? Something in Gromit. Uh, no, no, I've not seen them. Any of those? They, they, they look it's very the, interesting. It's the same style. I know it's stop like, motion. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it's exactly the same art. Like, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same people. What, is it Wallace and Gromit? Wallace and Gromit, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's the same people as what? Uh, it's Chicken Run. Like, oh, yeah, well, I would say, it's like the newer one that came out. I was like, ah, that just doesn't look interesting. Oh, I don't even know. I didn't even pay attention to it. Yeah, well, it just didn't look interesting. Yeah. That's the issue. It's like, I love stop motion, but it's not... I will not watch it only because it is stop motion. It actually has to, it has to be appealing as well. Because what was it? Box Trolls was really good. Yes. Oh, that was cute. And there was another one. I was a, no, the same people who did Isle of Dogs also did Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Yes. And I love Fantastic <laughs> Mr. Fox. That was another good one. Hmm. <laughs> George Clooney is fantastic. Fantastic. Oh my god. Which I think he's also in Isle of Dogs. There it goes again. <laughs> Just keep do do do. How unprofessional. I know. Horrible. Here, phone golf or a podcast? Yes. Yeah. Unfathomable. It's kind of the word. <laughs> Close. <laughs> ah, um, but no, as far as stop motion animation goes, let's see. Of course, uh, 
Um, there's also, I don't know if you saw Paranorman or Frank and Weenie. I've not seen either of them. I would like to see both of them, but I have not seen either of them. Okay, they're both. Um, I can't remember which one I like more. I know that Frank and Weenie made me sad, but that's also because I, my whole dog thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, but no. Well, there it goes again. So keep going. (laughs) <laughs> but as far as those go, um, I would say they're both pretty good. I mean, I can't remember one or, or the other being like hor- Like, oh, I'm never watching that again. Like, the thing is, I tend to most all the ones I've seen, I've like really, really enjoyed. It's just hard for studios to do stop motion. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, well, I don't mean as far as hard as as making it. I mean hard as in financially yeah. to make one and be profitable to make others because they just seem not to do as well at the box office which is sad because they're most of the time really really good yeah, they're really good and they're just such cool art yeah how they do it like seeing some of the stuff they did on kubo kubo uh, kubo was so amazing just going back and actually seeing behind the scenes from The Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> like, just how many Jack Skellington heads they had. You have and just, to. Yeah, exactly. And how they said that if they even got one pose wrong, they would have to go back and redo the entire thing up to... And it's well, just, see, which, that was different than how things play out a little bit more now. Yeah. Because they, they're, they're able to cheat a little bit <laughs> when it comes to it. Because they, they actually use technology yeah. and all the faces... Or more stuff in the computer versus yeah. being stuff they actually have to animate and move and do. So it makes it easier, which apparently makes it a little bit cheaper. And makes it where they actually can do these at a slower price so they don't have to make as much money. I mean, I was super disappointed that Kubo didn't make like a lot of money at the box office. I thought it was a phenomenal movie. With a great know. cast. I don't remember why I didn't see it. Because you're a terrible person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to throw that to up there. It's both of us probably. I'm missing all kind of movies. <laughs> okay. While we're on that sub- subject, <sighs> this one right here has not seen Split. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It was a horror movie, and I haven't wanted to go see it with, and it didn't, it didn't happen. I need to see it. It needs to happen. It'll happen before Glass comes out. <laughs> Can I fire him yet? <sighs> be difficult <laughs> I'm sorry I guess the appropriate response would be can I fire me yet cookie all over me crumbs just everywhere does Jack eat <laughs> oh he's a skeleton I don't know if he I don't remember. I need to... Maybe this weekend, well, maybe I'll sit down and actually go through some of our Halloween movies. Well, now would be the time, considering, you know... Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. It's Halloween and all. Yeah. Like, this close to Halloween. Or, in the case of this video, right after Halloween. Well, We're we... breaking all kinds of walls. Yeah, it's all right. They, they understand. They get it. They, they they know where we're at. Not physically. Hopefully not. They're not watching us. Oh God. Oh. We forgot to bring that up when we did our episode this week of breaking prisons. How, when they had finally got to White Bear, she saw the security camera. Yeah. Pretty much it was just like we the entire episode you're worried about cell phones and then suddenly, you know, good old security camera. And they like, exist too. But the first thing she says is that means the hunters are coming. So it's like the security cameras got to be direct feed to the phones too. Well, and we know the answer. This is yeah, this is know, completely still, different. <laughs> but they they didn't come here for spoilers. No, 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 that's that episode. If you actually want spoilers for that episode, you'll go through that episode <laughs> and get the spoiler yourself. Um, so, any other Halloween-y things we want to go over before calling it an evening? Well, 
I guess real quick, do you have a favorite Halloween costume? No. no I Not even a little bit. I, I don't think I ever have. I mean, I used to just go as a vampire. I mean, that's a simple, easy I mean, to do. If I had to pick, like, out of stuff that I have, I mean, I'm a big fan of this Jack costume, but <laughs> uh, if, probably, if you go to yesterday's episode of What You If, you'll see my favorite, one that I currently uh, own. Because hmm. I'm, as I've said multiple times, a big fan of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't really have one. I do mostly random animals. I was a psychotic squirrel for most of the haunted places that I worked at. Um, did you have any really fun Halloween memories? Anything that happened? Um, I don't know. I think one of my our first my first Halloweens I was allowed to do Halloween. Um, I, think I dressed up as a mummy, hmm. but like legit, like we cut a bunch of things and wrapped me in that, and that was falling apart as I was walking around the neighborhood. So that didn't help. Wow. Yeah. how you do costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fall apart on you. Um, I think my favorite Halloween memories besides, um, like growing up, every time we carved pumpkins, my mom would start a pumpkin gut fight. She'd like just throw a piece at somebody and next thing you know, pumpkin guts are flying all over the place. <sighs> what a mess to clean up. I yeah. guess too much. Too much. Um, we have video, I mean, I was too young to really, really remember it, but we have video of my mom there. A tree had uprooted, and so there was a giant hole. So what she did one Halloween is she took a strobe light, put it next to the hole, and then climbed in the hole, like all just garbed out. And so when kids walked by, she would slowly start clawing her way out of the hole. Yeah. Uh, and with the strobe light effect, that looks cool. Yeah. So that, that scared a lot of people. I remember um, another year, my dad, I think it was, was laying down on like a gurney kind of thing. And she had taken spaghetti and like put it where his stomach was. And then she was dressed up like a crazy nurse or a doctor or something and was just like pulling out like spaghetti. <laughs> um, <gasps> other than that, like personal, memories it would be when I went trick-or-treating with my sister and um, one of my best friends at the time and we were going around from house to house one house they were having a huge party and they were all drunk and so they made us sing to get our candy so we didn't know what to sing so we started singing jingle bells and uh, my friend turned it into the whole Jingle Bells Batman smell, so that's what it got changed into. And then by the end of it, they're like, oh, that's right, we don't have candy. <laughs> so <laughs> we ended up getting uh, Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Um, Why not? So we went to the next, like a couple houses down, and this lady was like, oh, you, you can't, here, well, I don't give out candy. And she had a plate of parsnips. What? Parsnips. It looks like a white carrot, pretty much. But it was just slices of parsnips. And Okay. Whatever that is. Um, I think my friend had kind of walked away. <laughs> but uh, my sister, she was like, thank you. And then uh, ate hers. And I was like, I'm so sorry, actually, with my fangs, because I had the fangs that you actually push in and they adapt to your teeth. Um, I was like, I'm sorry, but with my fangs, I can't actually eat anything. And she's like, oh, that's okay. She can have the, she can have yours. So my sister had to eat hers and mine. <laughs> and so we walked away. I had taken a straw, and I had put it into my... Um, or, no, I don't even think I had a straw. I think I was just, I had opened my can of pitch black and was just sitting there drinking all happy and my sister is just like. Have you had parsnip? I, I, I haven't either now, yeah. so. 
But yes, it was it was hilarious because she had because the lady was just watching us, so my sister had to eat both of them, and I was just like, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Just give away some Werther's original. Oh, I love Werther's original. Mm. They're so good. I could literally eat them all day and just be a happy camper. That's almost every sugar thing with you. Yes, but I would get full of this. I could just literally pop one after another and just go all day and just be happy. It really helps. They're, they're, they're kind of a nostalgia thing for me. My late great aunt always had them in her house when we went and visited her. So she always had the soaps on. And then she had a bowl that had a word of original on them. Very tasty. Very tasty. So. I think it's been a while. For what? Those. Did you had those? Mm -hmm. See, if I would have known these things, I would have known what to get for a Halloween episode. <laughs> oh, there's a guy. The last time I had something, I think Barbara brought some in. Hmm. I think I rem remember that vaguely. Well, maybe. I remember why. She had some. I mentioned I'd like them, so. It is what it is. But... Well, I'm, I'm getting Christmas ideas, so. <sighs> Well, 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 we'll do this again on Christmas. We'll go over <laughs> Christmas movies. Oh, God. As long as your favorite Christmas Christmas movie is not a Christmas story. No, it's not. You know, Mike, we've gone over this. I know, but still, as just... I don't know why that's everyone's favorite Christmas movie. I don't get it. I don't even know, if, I don't even know what it is, truthfully. Like, right off the bat, you'd have to tell me the synopsis of this, this story. I just... Because I, I don't remember what a Christmas story is. It's because the only thing pe ever pe people ever talk about... Is the little gun that he wants, the lamp that's shaped like a leg, and the bunny suit. Yeah, I've never seen this movie. Oh, okay, that. well. So I can't tell you if I like it or not because I've never watched it. <laughs> I, see, I, it's been so long, I don't even remember if I know what it's about. I just remember it vaguely being about a little boy who wanted some sort of rifle or something for Christmas and someone had a lamp shaped like a leg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And there's a bunny costume and at, I believe at one point he gets his tongue stuck to a pole. But, yeah, that, that's a Christmas story. Yeah, since I've never seen it, it cannot be my favorite. Okay. Well, we'll possible. definitely hear about that. I don't know if we have any Thanksgiving stories, but... I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we'll come up with some Thanksgiving feast for. Oh no, we'll do something. Talk about favorite. More about. Food. <laughs> we like food. Maybe we'll have to try yeah, something we'll... different for. Yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see what we can do for that one. At least go over Thanksgiving food specifically. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> indeed. I wonder what. I was about to say. I wonder what. Go on. What? <laughs> what? I died. I'm sorry I died for a minute. My first thought was really stupid. And so I was able to stop myself before I just said it. And you decided to try to say it again? I, I'm very stubborn. So when I tell myself not to do something, my first reaction is I need to do it. And then I immediately told myself to know. Okay. It, pre it pretty much had to deal with other cultures and Thanksgiving, which would make absolutely no sense. That'll be alright. It'll be alright. But I think that's about it. Yeah, we've gone over through our, all our Halloween stuff. Yeah, we've, we've thoroughly ventured down Halloween and ventured off a few spots. <laughs> we went on a huge convention tangent. That was the first yes, thing. Yes, that, that, that was really a tangent. Well, yeah. uh, I believe that is it. I think we are done for the evening. As always, you can reach me at BGJ Gamer. Reach Amanda at KC Pup. The dogs are trying to break down the door. I think so. Either that or it's zombies. Reach the show at Beyond Our Focus on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, 
podcast services, including Spotify, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, and several others. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let us know your favorite Halloween memories. If there's something that you miss doing that you guys don't do anymore. Or like people being, you know, outside after 8 o'clock at night. That doesn't happen anymore. Well, people don't even go to outdoors anymore. Now it's just trunk or treat. Because it's not safe out there. It's not safe. It's dangerous. We were allowed to just walk around the block in the snow. I think we're fine. <laughs> We're all going to die. Anyways, tell us your favorite memories. Tell us if you've been to conventions. You know, uh, favorite movies, villains. Christmas movies, apparently. Well, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> but other than that, no, I think we're, we're good. Alrighty, so till next time. Long days and pleasant nights. And belated Halloween. <laughs>